Okay, we're now at the third and final step of the non-constant or supernormal growth pricing problems. And that's solved for present value. In step one, we forecasted the dividends up to and including the first year of constant growth. In step two, we use the constant growth model to find the value of all the dividends during the constant growth stage. Now we're gonna put those together and we can look at the timeline. Remember, we've changed our infinite timeline now down to a five-year timeline. So we have five years. Our required return is 13%. Our dividend in year one, we said was $2.60. Our dividend year two is four dollars and sixteen cents. Our dividend year three was five eighty two. Our dividend year four six dollars and ninety eight cents. Dividend year five was seven dollars and sixty eight cents. And we don't have to worry about this dividend year six anymore because that's already included in that constant growth pricing model that we did in step two. So we're done with this. We're not going to be using that in our timeline. So our timeline has the dividends in years one, two, three, four, and five. However, we also know that all the remaining dividends are worth $88.78 as of year five. So that's a year five cash flow as well. So we want to add that to our timeline. So in addition to that $7.68, we're also going to receive $88.78 in year five. So now our timeline looks like the following. seven dollars and sixty eight cents plus the eighty eight dollars seventy eight cents are a net cash flow in year five of ninety six dollars and forty six cents so that ninety six dollars and forty six cents so what we put on our year five And now we've just got a simple uneven cash flow worksheet like we did in chapter four, time value of money. So we just plug these in and I'm not gonna go through each calculator approach. If you're having problems with uh, net present value calculations, just review the chapter four notes on time value of money. But each calculator sets these up a little bit differently. But in essence, what we're doing, CF zero is zero, CF one, two dollars and sixty cents CF2 is four dollars and sixteen cents CF3 five dollars and eighty two cents CF4 six dollars and ninety eight cents and finally CF5 is that ninety six dollars and forty six cents that combined the dividend year five and the price in year five. Our discount rate is 13%. So now we want to solve for the net present value, which is going to be the value of the stock today. I'll just do that real quick on my HP 10B. Again, your process will be a little bit different if you have one of the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus or the TI-83 or TI-84. I start with zero for my CF zero. $2.60 for CF1. $4.16 for my CF2. $5.82 for my CF3. $6.98 for my cash flow four. $96 
46 for my cash flow 5 13% for my discount rate solve for net present value and that gives me the current stock price or current value of the stock today which is $66.23 and that's my final answer the non-constant model is complete now one thing I want to add on the non-constant model the same model is very often used in real-world stock valuation the only difference is instead of dividends a lot of professionals will use something called free cash flows which generates how much cash flows the company is bringing in as opposed to just the dividends that they're paying out to stockholders that allows this model to be extended to companies that either have very low dividend payout ratios are companies that don't pay out dividends.